In this video, you will learn a bit more about the foundation of Chart.js. We're not going to focus on Chart.js, but we're going to focus on the Canvas API here. And you will notice, and you will truly appreciate the Canvas API or, or the Chart.js library the moment you understand how to draw this simple item here. This looks very, very simple, but it requires a lot of calculations. So let's start to explore how to do this. In this video, we're going to focus on how to draw a chart in the Canvas API in JavaScript for Chart.js. And this is basically not really a Chart.js topic. However, Chart.js is heavily built on the Canvas API. And understanding just how you draw something in a Canvas API will help you respect more how Chart.js works because it is quite complicated. So, Let's start to look at it and let's get a default code first. So go here to charges3.com getting started. We're going to just grab the default code here. And we're going to copy this. And for some reason I get this error here. So if you see this error here, sorry about that. Uh, let's say it just doesn't work somehow properly. Anyway, we're going to uh, well, that in here, we we'll paste it in here. And then we have this chunk of code here, but I'm going to remove all the JavaScript of it and just work from a blank canvas. So what we're going to do here, we don't need any of this. We don't need even the uh, script here. Well, we can just remove all the script tag, or except for the script tag here, and then this one as well. If I save this now, refresh, we just have a very basic item here. We will be, we, I repeat, we will be doing nothing with Chart.js right now. However, if you've ever read on my website, I indicated that Chart.js library is basically like a bootstrap, but then for Canvas. And the reason why I said that was is simply this. If you look at it, it creates a chart without you knowing anything about the Canvas API, which makes it extremely easy. But the reason why I want to show you now how you can use the Canvas API is because sometimes you will do customization. And if you've seen many of my other videos, we put in our custom arbitrary lines, we do custom tooltip lines, uh, custom data labels, you understand how important they become in understanding the basics. So that's why I want to just explore with you the basics and just do something that we would normally do in a few seconds, start just drawing a chart. We're going to create a simple bar chart here. And then you will really understand how complex it can become. So the first thing what we're going to do here is, in here, I'm going to say here very simple, of course, the constant, and this constant we'll call the CTX, which will be very similar to um, uh, chart.js. We say here, document dot get element by ID, and this ID, of course, is our my chart ID here in this case. Then what I will say here is another one is constant my chart equals then we say ctx which is referring to this and then we say here get context and then we say here to d this is very important to understand because basically here it indicates go into the canvas in this canvas here with this id and start drawing whatever we're going to draw well depends on what we're going to code right now and this here, or even this part, is already automatically being recognized by Chart.js. And remember in Chart.js version 2, we had to put it separate, we had to indicate it separately, but in Chart.js 3, you don't have to do it. So what we're going to do now is very, very simple. What we're going to do, do is draw something simple here. So all we can do here is we just grab here the my chart. So that's the drawing command. And then we say here dot, and then we can say here, well, let's draw a square. Let's say fill style. And this fill style will be equal to, and let's grab here one of our colors that we consistently use. This reddish pinkish color. And once we have this here, the next thing what we need to do, because this is only filling up the style, what we need to do now is to draw the coordinates of the, of the style here, or basically of the square. Sorry, this is a square, by the way. So we're going to do that one so what we're going to say here dot fill this rectangle and this rectangle we will fill and then we're going to put in here the coordinates let's say 20 pixels this is the x value or basically the coordinates at the beginning here somewhere right now there's absolutely nothing so we need to work on that one let's say 20 by 20 comma and then we see we say this will be a, a well 20 pixels in width and 20 pixels in height 
So if we save this now, refresh, you can see here what is happening. We're drawing something nicely. Let's look at this. And you can see here, we are now moving away in our coordinates. 20 pixels to the right and then 20 pixels down. So you can see here. And then if you look at it by default, there's a default height in here probably based on uh, basic setup, which is 300 by 150 pixels. So the width is 350 or 300 by 150 pixels. So, so here's the challenge. Can you put in this bar, make it a bar here, hit it all here, somewhere halfway through here, let's say there's uh, 20 pixels up, it should be 20 pixels down as well, and also 20 pixels away from here, and then we're going to make another one afterwards. Let's put this one here, so we have this bar. That will look like a bar chart. So what we're going to do now is, well, basically here, if we know the width, in this case, we know the width, the width would be here, hun uh, sorry, 300, by height is 150, and we need to know the height here. So if this is 20 pixels, we have the remaining here, from here is 130 pixels. So basically here will be 20 up to 150. This is very important. It counts exactly the opposite of what you expect from a chart, because a chart normally you look at down here and then you go up. In this case, it's exactly the opposite. And this is why you will respect chart yet a lot, because it understands this logic, and it saves you a lot of time in, in reverse calculating it. So basically, it would say this, if we want to go all down, we need to say here, this is 20 by 20, and then the length of this, and how many pixels will be, 130. We will say 130, but it's not the case. And the reason why is this, if we save this now, refresh, oh, this is the width, sorry, I don't want the width, I want the height of 130. If I save this now, what happens is we have an issue here. We have no grid line space. Because you can see here, we have to go here a little bit up, 20 pixels up, that would be enough here. So this would mean that the length of the bar is not 130, but 110 pixels. So if I save this now, there we are. So now we have this, and this works nicely. So here is another challenge. Can you put another one besides it? So let's do this one here. So if we copy this, I'm going to put one here. The first thing that we need to remember is basically this here will indicate how many pixels we need to jump to the right. Remember, we have here 20 pixels, and then this bar here, this width, is also 20 pixels. So that would mean that if we want to jump another, let's say another 20 pixels, we need to do here 20 pixels plus 20 pixels plus 20 pixels. So this would be then 60 pixels to the right. And we maintain the width of 20 pixels, because it's still a bar with the same thickness. However, we want to make this 20 pixels smaller. So we want to go down now with 20 pixels. How do we do this? Well, we have to calculate here. In this case, we need to put in here 40. And if we save this now and refresh, you can see here what is, but what is happening is this. It reacts on this as well, because now this is the length. This is always the length. So this would mean that this length would be minus whatever would be here. And we could do maybe a formula. And you can see here, they basically do a formula here. So what I'm going to do here is, uh, how do we do this? Well, what we can say here is uh, y start. This is the y start value, which will be 20. This is a constant. So we're going to say here will be equal to this. This one will be equal to multiplied by 2. So you can see here in chart.js, they built extremely uh, uh, a lot of formulas just to make this work and this is why it is so hard to play with canvas it's exactly the opposite and it's slightly harder to work with so what we want to do here is this is 110 uh, well let's see here uh, uh, if I save this now refresh all right we're back to the original let me say here what we could say here is the following the height here could be this uh, let's see our height would be basically this. Uh, let's see, we can say here constant. I even for me, I'm also struggling. Height equals 150 pixels, or we do 130, that will be fine. So then we have the start, and we have also the grid line at the bottom. So we need to do minus eventually the amount of pixels here. So we say here height will be this minus. I guess y start. Here will be the height minus y start multiplied by 2. So 
if I save this now and refresh, you can see here now this works. All right, so let's do another one as well. Let's try one more here that it goes down again. So you can see here now we do this multiply by three, multiply by three here. If I save this, refresh. Uh, all right, so that doesn't work. And the reason why it doesn't work, of course, is we forgot this here. This here needs to be recalculated again. So this will be plus an increment here. I guess here, this will be 20. And then, uh, well, the, I guess here, this will be then 40, so 100. So if I save this now, let's see here, there we are. So we have this now. And this is just only the basics. Now what we have is another one. Let's try and put in here a grid line. Now what you want to do is we want to start the grid line here at the bottom here. So we have here basically what we call a stroke line or stroke style. All right. So we're going to say here the following. We say here my chart and then here a stroke style. And this style will be, well, we can just use here the default color. I, if I'm not mistaken, it is hashtag triple C. Triple three, or no, sorry, is it in triple six, or maybe triple nine, one or the other, or triple C. If I refresh here, of course, it doesn't work yet. Why? We didn't indicate anything yet. So let's indicate here uh, the stroke line. So, how do we do a stroke line here? Let me just think. I uh, forgot what's the term here. Uh, stroke, brack, stroke. Let me just check. All right, so I see one of the options that's the easiest one to do. It's like a this is stroke style, so the other one is a stroke rack. Is that the best one? To be honest, no, it's not. And the reason why is you have uh, this one is basically like a border box. So it's a box, but then border only a border line instead of the filling inside. So this is a rectangle, almost very similar to that. So we say here uh, stroke rack, and here we just do the same for now. Just do the same, but the only thing what I want to do here now is I want to have the line here. So if the border is on top of each other, or there's no pixel up and down, then there's no border. Then it's just still a line because the border line is just on each other. So that makes sense. So that's what we're going to do here. So let's, for simplicity's sake, I'm going to just put in here something and just see what happens because I have also no idea right now where we are. So if we save this, there we are. Okay, so we get this one now. So if the height would be equal to zero, we go up, fair enough. So if this will be zero, we have a line, as you can see here. So maybe if we want to make it a thicker line, you can put in one, so it will be a nicer, thicker line. So what we're going to do now is where we have to put in this entire line here. Let's go here down. So, but of course, are this here, maybe we want to have here a little bit of space here, so we put in 15. We do that one first, if I save this. It will start earlier, which is a normal thing. So because there is a line that starts from left to right here. And then we want to make sure we hit this all to the end or at least to a certain point. So what we do now here, if this is 15, where do we need to start here at the bottom? Well, we need to start, uh, or at least we need to go down. How much we need to go down is basically the height here. This is the starting point. Save this. Refresh. All right, there we are. And now we can just make this long. So the long will be based on the length here. And this length we can do here. If this is 300, let's say uh, 15 is already here. So it should be maybe 20 pixels there as well. So 300 minus 15 plus 20 is 275 basically. Oh no, sorry, not. No, 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 that's not correct. It's 15 plus 20. So if I save this, there we are. So why 15 plus 20? So there's a 20 pixels here, space between. Maybe we should have here as a 20 pixels. Then it would mean that we should start here five pixels farther ahead. So we have a very consistent structure here. All right, so that looks slightly better. So there you are, and now we have this line and maybe we just can make it a single line here. All right, so we have this here. So here would be another challenge. How will you put in here another line somewhere here? Well. We can do it very similar. We just copy all of this. And you can see now, we, this is basically the array is being looped inside. And I'm just showing it here now because it is interesting, but also quite challenging. So what we want to do here, we, we want to go now one up. Let's say we want to go 20, 20 pixels up. How do we do that? Well, the Y height minus 20. So if we do this, we go one up here now, as you can see. 
And why minus 20 is because down here we are going to the coordinates. The higher we go, the lower in value in the y-axis. So this is why it is so, uh, I guess it's a real mind twister. But if you do this now, you start to see here, eventually we'll be able to loop here many items. This would be minus 20, minus 40, and then minus 60, etc., etc. There we are. So with this, we can play around. How would we make a line here? Well, let's try that one as well. So we can do this exactly the same, but now we're going to play around with it slightly differently. So we have this width of 20, or sorry, the width, it moves here 20, and then we need to go from top to bottom. So for that, we have here, this should be zero, and here we can do 150, but is that the real, real length that we want? No, that's the full length. What we need is, well, let's do 130. Is the height minus eventually the bottom. So if this would be 20 on the top, maybe we want to have bot at the bottom as well 20, it would make sense that this should be 110. But let me show you 130. Refresh. Now you can see we hit too much. This is the 20 pixels. And then here we can do this. And there we are. So with this here, we can do maybe a little bit more. Let's do 5 pixels more here. So we do 15 here. Oh, sorry, not there. On the height. 15 here. There we are. So if we do 15 here or 5 pixels up, the length must increase by 5 as well, as you can see here. There we are. So now we have this. Let's put two more lines here. And then we probably have a nice exercise here with some extra understanding of ChartJS and or at least how Canvas is really, how ChartJS uses Canvas because it, do, it does it into an array with formulas. So let's see here, we have this one. Now, of course, we have to move this. We have to move a little bit. We can move this 40. I'm not sure if 40 is enough. I think it's, we should this 100 and this should be probably 60 or even more. All right, so this is acceptable. So we have some space here. Let's see how much is that space here. Maybe we can put it in the center then. Uh, that space is five pixels here, and then here it's 20, 20. All right. So if I do this five pixels more, this one is for five pixels, and this here we can just maintain. All right, that is too much. So if I do five pixels, so I need to maybe a 10. No, 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 I need to minus 10 pixels, 55 and 95. Save that. There you are. So now you get this here, and then this starts to look nicer and nicer. We can play around with this consistently. Of course, this is just pure uh, practicing, and we could probably, I guess, we could just remove this because we have this stroke lines will be ex consistently grabbed from up here, if I'm not mistaken. So if I refresh here, you can see the stroke line maintains itself. And I guess this would be triple C. There you are. And then we can do all of this here like that. So all these grid lines here are now lighter in color. Save that, refresh, there we are. Now we have this. And this here is the way to play around. And of course, you can you have to really appreciate it. the moment you expand this chart or the canvas, the entire item, this is why when you resize, basically it's being recalculated. And this is really interesting because it's a recalculation. It will calculate the pixels of this, again, of everything here so that is basically a little bit more about how ChartJS uses canvas and why ChartJS by in essence is the bootstrap of a canvas to create simple charts without us knowing how to use the canvas api of course the more customization you're doing like as i'm going to so many different topics that in that case Understanding how to draw is essential.